Hey there, Dango Stu here. Today's video is about the other reason that outboards overheat and is proudly sponsored by MarineEngine.com. The main reason outboards overheat is because either the impeller is bad or the thermostat that opens when the engine gets hot to allow that water to be pumped through the water jackets is not opening. They're your main two reasons. But this outboard was overheating for a third reason, and that's a blown head gasket. Bit of a stormy rainy day in the workshop, so hopefully the uh, thunder doesn't make too much noise for you. Uh, now, depending on how badly blown a head gasket is, you can often get a really obvious symptom of this, which is you see the telltale pulsing. To explain why you get this pulsing, I'll show you this outboard, which already has the head taken off. This is where the thermostat goes, and when it opens, it allows the water to flow through these areas around the bores, which are called the water jackets. And if the head gasket's blown, combustion gases can come across past the head gasket here, and what they do is they start to displace the water in the water jackets. That explains the pulsing you get at Telltale, and it also explains why it overheats, because this cooling water can't do its job, it's being pushed away the combustion gases are stronger than the impeller in the water pump. This type of problem's a bit easier to diagnose sometimes in something like a car or an inboard that has a cooling system. So you actually have either a radiator or a heat exchanger. The reason it's easier to diagnose is because these combustion gases have a lot of carbon dioxide in them and they end up going into the cooling water. In the case of the outboard, we don't have this because we're just cooled by raw water from the river or the sea. If the head gasket is blown and those combustion gases are going into the cooling water, there's a test you can get. It has a, a particular chemical in it. You pump some of the gases through that chemical and it'll change colour from blue to green or vice versa. I haven't used one for a while now. I haven't done cars for a while. Uh, but then straight away you know that you have a high level of carbon dioxide in your cooling system, so you have a blown head gasket. If the head gasket's blown really badly, once again, you know you can open things like the header tank, the radiator, um, give the engine a rev and all those combustion gases will just cause the cooling water to come up in a big geyser. So pretty easy to tell in that situation, a little bit harder to tell with an outboard. Things didn't go so well taking this cylinder head off, uh, obviously old engine, very small bolts, they're about six millimeter head bolts. Uh, so a couple of them snapped and also the cylinder head itself cracked the casing. I'll show you that. So here you can see the casing broke here and here just around the bolts. These aren't threaded sections, that's just where the shank of the uh, bolt was. Obviously it was corroded enough just to, to chip it. And then other places, the uh, threaded parts have just been stuck into the cylinder head. Here's the most notable example. Actually, I think, was it? One, two, three, four, five of them broke off. Now this engine also has really smooth bores, all sorts of other issues with it. It's obviously got hot and piston expands and it's taken all the cross hatching off. But what we have over here is an identical engine. Now it has troubles in that the uh, pivot tube is not working so well, but as far as I can tell, the engine itself is probably okay. So we are gonna make a mix and match engine from these two and get the best one we can. Making one engine out of two is something I've been meaning to do for a while because often I see outboards that are not running come up on the market. They're either free or very, very cheap. And I think having a couple of them, you've got a very good chance to be able to get one good engine out of them. Uh, I think, well, this one belonged to Vicky, so, you know, obviously not really free, it's hers. Um, this one I got for about $150 Australian, which is not a lot of money for a little outboard, really. Uh, and the same goes for bigger outboards. You can often find outboards going very, very cheap, one, two, three hundred dollars $300. And I feel that depending on what's wrong with it, you could then find two outboards uh, for say $400 and have a really high chance of being able to put one outboard together that's pretty sweet. Uh, I think it's a really nice way to go. You go, one's got a dodgy you know, leg on it, one's got a dodgy power head, pick the best of all of them and fingers crossed you've got something you can get running reliably. First job for me now is to take the power head off this outboard. We're gonna be using pretty much everything from the lower cowling down from this outboard, but the power head from that outboard. First up, I'm going to disconnect gear selector, throttle, then we've got our kill switch, choke, and fuel line. Get all those things away, so the only thing attaching the power head to the midsection is the bolts underneath. I'm just going to back these locking collars off. 
for the throttle cable. Well, cables, but it's both throttle. And then we can just pop them out of the bracket. So I don't get my hands in the way then, but all we're doing then is getting them out, getting it so there's enough slack. And then we can get this end out of its groove. It's free. Turn the throttle towards the other one. There you go, this one's popped out on its own. So, throttles. Gear selector is pretty straightforward. Here, this gear selector is retained by this clip. We're going to pop that off, which is going to let us get it out of this lever here. Once we had this clip off, I just rotated it down to let me pull the gear selector out. The kill switch wires just come to here. So, what have we got? A black and a brown. Let's just unplug those. Leave that kill switch in the lower cowling. It can just go on to the new power head. Same here with the choke. Just pop that off, pull it out, and leave the choke lever here for the new engine. Fuel. Simple little hose clamp here. Well, I say simple, they're actually really fiddly, these ones. I hate them. But we'll get there. Let's see if I can stab myself with the pick at the same time. There we go. And then I'll just find a little flathead. Looks like this hose split a little bit then. I've actually got some of those round hose pliers somewhere, a much better tool. But I think we've got more than enough slack just to cut the last little bit of that off and get some fresh hose so we don't have a fuel leak inside. All right, under here, we now have three bolts each side, so six bolts total. Let's take the power off. Little 10 mil heads on these bolts, so pretty small again. But um, they're actually not feeling anywhere near as corroded as the cylinder head bolts were which is nice. Feeling. Feeling pretty solid still. What am I missing? Definitely don't want to read the manual. Okay, gearbox out. Plenty of grease on the spline, so definitely not the problem. Let's have a look what we've missed. With some outboards, the gear selector bracket is bolted to the block. In this case, it seems to be bolted to the lower cowling. So I don't think that's our problem. Might just give it a couple of taps. Mm. Just stuck. That's all. Here we are with the power head. Plenty of stuff on it that's still good. Carburetor, full start, ignition, all that kind of stuff. Here's the gear selector bracket I was talking about that's a part of the lower cowling. Sometimes this can be a mechanism that's bolted onto the block, so you need to undo it before you take it away. But that's not the case with this outboard. This is just a bit of brake cleaner. If the gasket on that power head stays and is in as good condition as this one, I think I'll just put a bit of sealant on it. It's a nine horsepower, you know. Okay, let's put this aside. Let's put this aside and then get the power head off the other one. Same process. Hopefully goes as easily. Maybe not, it's older. Now this one I don't know the history of, so we may well have that issue I was talking about before where the splines from the drive shaft are corroded into the bottom of the crankshaft in the power head. Because it feels like it's now, bolts are out, it 
it's sort of rocking, it's unseated from the gasket, but not coming up. So, I think we'll do the same thing we did before, gearbox off, that way we can either rule it out or hopefully solve the problem. I'll show you the leg on this one, it's much worse than the other one. Hopefully the power head's good because the leg's pretty corroded. You can see here how badly corroded this is. This uh, pivot tube. Anyway, let's see if we can get the gearbox off. We'll save the gearbox. I just don't think we'll save the midsection. The midsection, yeah, doesn't even turn either. That's a fixable problem. Got a couple of vids on that, but um, everything about the other engine is in better condition other than the power head. It's exactly this type of corrosion that stops the outboard from turning. Unfortunately, quite a big fix. In order to get to there, you need to take the power head off. Engine mount, whole thing, take it apart, and then press it out. Part of me uh, is hoping the problem is flying stuck in the crankshaft because it is a problem to get asked about a bit. And I don't think I've ever done a video on trying to fix it. It's a tough one to fix because you can't get direct access to put heat or spray or anything like that very easily. Alright, that's not our problem. Plenty of grease on the splines here, so that's not our problem. But that's alright because I'll keep this gearbox as a spare. So I'm kind of glad it's off anyway. Another thing I missed showing you before was that you have a mechanism here. And this mechanism as the gear gets selected, so if I move the gear selector up, when this uh, E-clip was still on here, this rests against it. And what this does is when you're in forward, it allows the engine to tilt up. When you're in reverse, it locks it onto the bracket so that the engine doesn't tilt up with the thrust of reverse. So that's what this is about. Also, when I disconnected the gear selector from the gearbox, I do this by punching a roll pin out from here. To do that, I just used a regular punch, because that's all I've got here, but you can actually get uh, special roll pin punches that have a little pin on the top to help center it on the pin itself. This is the head gasket I actually bought to repair the other one. Uh, if I'd known how it was gonna go at the time, I would have bought the base gasket instead, but at least we've got one spare. Of course, this one's torn its base gasket. The other one that we needed was in good condition. Never mind, that happens. Thinking I wouldn't mind taking this lower cowling off this one. Just gonna take that E-clip off so we can lift the gear selector all the way up. All right, now, this is actually the, uh, the muffler essentially, it's where the exhaust come down and I have seen these corrode, that original Yamaha 50 I restored had a big problem with this and it was really hard to reach, that's actually quite accessible on this one. All right, so this is the midsection, not turning at all, so this tube comes right down through here is what I'd need to press out. And you really need to get an outboard to this point in order to do that. So it's a big job. Might seem simple. If you're lucky, you can get three people. Somebody pops grease, somebody heats with a torch, somebody keeps trying to turn. If you keep doing that, you can soften the old grease and get new grease in. But if it's rust like this, your only option is to uh, pull it apart and replace that section. Actually, while we're here, this is the tube that comes up to the water pump. Water comes into this cavity here, and then because of the base gasket seals, goes up into the power head. This can be a common place that if an impeller starts breaking up, it gets stuck in here. So like I was saying, I think in last week's video, you know, if you do let an impeller fail, then this is how hard it is to get to some of these places to get those bits of rubber out. If it's stuck in there, it literally is power head off, get the bits of rubber out, put it back together, put a new impeller in. So 
put down power in before it fails. Okay, let's put this one aside. Ooh, it's heavy. And let's bring our other one back. This is the head gasket I actually bought to repair the other one. Uh, if I'd known how it was going to go at the time, I would have bought the base gasket instead, but at least we've got one spare. Okay, talking to a camera that wasn't on, I've just taken the carburetor from the old power head, well, the broken power head, onto the new one. I've decided that because I knew this engine was a good working one before it overheated, I'm taking all the ancillary stuff from that one. So carburetor is a classic case in point. Uh, when I took the carburetor off this new engine, the one we're replacing it with, uh, you can see here it's all been over tightened and broken. So being that but keeping the carburetor. When I look around these two engines, this is the one we're putting back on the leg. This is the one that overheated that's coming off. It seems like most components are a bit tidier on this. So I am really tempted to put everything I can across. Take these coils, top lead, ooh, bottom lead here goes to the top spark plug, so worth paying attention to how that's bottom to top. There you go. Green. Now, uh, so a new carburetor, fuel pump, coil, uh, sorry. then we can reconnect these, green, green, and then the black and brown's our kill switch. Okay, I think this is about as far as we can get with this one. I'm just going to plonk it loosely on here because this is where it's going. But we'll get the gasket first. Obviously this video has gone on a bit longer than explaining that a blown head gasket can cause overheating, but it is a surprisingly common one. The number of times I get emails saying, um, you know, I've done my water pump, my thermostat's pumping lots of water, but it's still overheating. And it's like, well, you've probably got a blown head gasket. There are other reasons, you know, it's, you know, you can have block galleries. That's the other thing. You take the head gasket off and you'll see inside here, you know, if these water jackets here are all full of mud and crust and salt, then that could be a problem too. At the end of the day, the engine's going to overheat if you're not getting cool water flowing around inside these water jackets. That's going to happen if your impeller's gone, you're not pumping water up. It's going to happen if the thermostat doesn't open, allowing that water to flow. It's going to happen if these are all blocked up with silt and gunk, not letting water flow. And it's going to happen if a blown head gasket allows combustion gases to expel that water and push it away. All right, well, take care. Hope this video helps you if you're having an overheating problem or you just like playing with outboards. I'll catch you next week with a new video. Uh, whether the base gasket arrives in time to do this or something else, I don't know, but we'll see when we get there. All right, take care. See ya. You've arrived, Daffy. Coming through. It's a magpie this morning, is it? There's always someone to defend your breakfast from. Not giving up.
Got him. Have you decided you don't want to go to bed? You're just going to sleep on a log all night. Even Daisy's wondering why you've gone bonkers. <laughs> what are the crazy people doing now? I think you've disturbed our house so much they've gone, no, nope, we're moving into the log. You've messed with our house.